Today we're going to be having an in-depth look at the inspector in an inspectacles. His name's in the title, so we know he's important, but who really is this inspector? And why does he visit this family in Bromley? There's much speculation over who or what this inspector actually is. Is he a ghost? Is he the voice of Priestley? Is he the voice of God? Or is he their conscience? You might even want to consider your own interpretations. Examiners love them. What we do know is that he is a force of good and one to be reckoned with. Whenever Priestley describes the inspector, he uses the semantic field of size, showing the significance of this man, his power and his purpose. He's described on his entrance as creating an impression of massiveness, solidity and purposefulness. He's a man in his 50s, dressed in a plain darkish suit. He speaks carefully and weightily and has a disconcerting habit of looking hard at the person he addresses before actually speaking. So, the inspector is a figure of authority, which is a disturbing shift for the Burlings. He interrupts Arthur, cutting through massively. These interruptions and his indifference to the nicer points of polite behaviour further juxtaposes him from the others. Throughout the play, Priestley makes use of dramatic pauses to build tension. The inspector uses them to make the other characters feel uncomfortable and to make sure that he controls the pace. He is by no means intimidated by Mr Burling's assumed status and self-importance. He cleverly builds on comments made by other characters, often anticipating information. He uses their own words against them when he manipulates them. Examples include his repetition of the word impression and his manipulation of the word position, the meaning of which he changes from a metaphorical to a more literal one in order to shock Mrs Burling. The inspector also turns each character's words and actions back on them. For example, he draws attention to Gerald's hypocrisy regarding women. And you think young women ought to be protected against unpleasant and disturbing things? This theme of reversal runs through the structure of the play. He has a systematic approach, dealing with one person and one line of inquiry at a time. His method is to confront a suspect with a piece of information and then make them talk. Or, as Sheila puts it, he's giving us the rope so that we'll hang ourselves. He has an air of omnipotence as he knows the truth behind Eva's history and the family's involvement even though he claims she died only hours ago. Obviously, the phone call at the end of the play suggests he knew about the death before it had even happened. Sheila seems aware of his all-knowing nature and tells Gerald, of course he knows, at the end of Act One. He's obviously in a great hurry towards the end of the play. He stresses, I haven't much time. Does he know that the real inspector is shortly going to arrive? If he is an apparition or an angel, then maybe he only has a few hours on Earth. These qualities certainly suggest supernatural elements to the character. Plus, the name Ghoul has very ghostly connotations. When he begins to reveal who is responsible for the death of Eva Smith, his words are quite emphatic and he makes great use of two short sentences in the imperative, remember that, never forget. His final speech is like a sermon or a politician's speech. He alludes to the Bible when he says we are members of one body to emphasise the inspector's belief in human love and equality. The speech is composed of complex sentences which are referential, these are phrases that provide information, and short sentences that are expressive, phrases that express the speaker's feelings. Priestley makes great use of these short sentence structures in order to deliver his opinions as facts. The intended effect is to make both the characters and the audience inspect their own consciences. Furthermore, the use of short sentences symbolises the limit of society, which could still be developed by everyone accepting each other. To convey to the Burlings how widespread their actions are, the inspector uses the extended metaphor of millions of Eva Smiths and John Smiths to represent the number of working class men and women who were exploited on a daily basis by the greed of capitalism. The inspector's use of the inclusive pronoun we contrasts with the language of Mr and Mrs Burling who normally use I as their primary concern is themselves. 
The use of we further emphasises Priestley's ideas of collective responsibility and how society should be formed. He leaves the family with the message, we are responsible for each other in his final dramatic speech, and he warns them of the fire and blood and anguish that will result if they do not pay attention to what he has taught them. Priestley skillfully warns the audience, through Gaul, of the potential social disasters of failing to support or help those in need in society. All this foreknowledge and mystery suggests that the inspector is not a real person. So who or what is he? Certainly it seems that Priestley did not want to promote a single interpretation of who the inspector really is. The character's dramatic power lies in the mystery. To have revealed his identity as a hoaxer or some kind of spirit would have spoilt the unresolved tension that is so effective at the end of the play. Inspector Ghoul serves several functions in the play. He acts as the storyteller, linking all the separate incidents together into one coherent story. Priestley has him supply dates for events or fill in the background about the girl. He also behaves rather like a priest, someone who characters confess their sins to, helping them to see the extent of their involvement in the downfall of Eva Smith and encouraging them to acknowledge their guilt and repent. Whilst the inspector himself does not hand out forgiveness or punishment, characters are made to recognise that they must find the courage to judge themselves, because only then will they have learned anything and be able to change themselves. So, he certainly is a man who is clouded in mystery, but hopefully this has helped you understand the function of our main man.